Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are looking at a mocked up SMCU system. Now, a client just purchased this and I am getting tons of messages on the enclosure and a setup for the SMCU. And now you guys can see how this mock-up works. And of course, this client is building the system himself. So essentially what he purchased is just the components you see here. Now, what I wanted to do is give you guys a visual comparison of the SMCU system versus a G54. Now, of course, you can see the size difference. I mean, that's obvious. But what isn't so obvious is the fact that when I tell you how easy a G540 is, of course, we just have the power supply, heat sinks on the G540, and then the cooling system, and essentially your e-stop and your IEC switch port. I mean, that's essentially all we have on this system. Because once again, it's an integrated four axis drive. Now the G540's limitation is three and a half amps, whereas the SMCU can go up to nine amps. The difference being with the 540 is of course it has a DB25 parallel port input. And on the SMCU system, we chose to go with ethernet. So again, looking at this setup, I wanna make it very clear as to what actually has to be done here because it's very minimal. You can see right here is our IEC port, 10 amp fuse, and then we have the drive itself mounted. Now this drive, if she comes over here and pans in, is mounted with thumb nuts. Okay, we've got two on each side, set to go. Simple to service. Uh, the UC400 also mounted with thumb nuts. So again, if you have to change anything, you're set. Custom made ribbon cable. You can see how short that is. And that is exactly how optimized this system is. Your cooling fans have to be wired which is very simple to do with my power supplies because again, you can see that my 48 volt power supplies have terminal blocks. And these terminal blocks replace the typical three and maybe four terminal outputs that you see on most power supplies. It also has a built-in EMI filter. This allows you to hook up all your accessories without requiring you to put in terminal splitters. So again, very, very easy to do. End user would simply mount this, this will power the entire drive system. He also will have to mount his step down, which right now is getting boxed, and that will power the voltage going to the UC400. And that is it, essentially, because this system also uses my pre-built double shielded 26 foot motor cables. So these are directly plug and play. He will plug them in and he is all set. Now, to make sure grounding is done properly, because this is something that comes up all the time, she'll come over here, and when he plugs in his motor cables, there is his ground bus. And by terms of actual conduction, when those screws go through and mount the drive, naturally those screws are metal, they're conductive right to the ground bus, and that grounds the entire chassis. So it's all done. All bases have been covered. Now the beauty of this system, once again, among other things, is the fact that it has two built-in relays that you don't have to wire. And then on top of that, we also have the adjustable dip switches so you can adjust everything from your steps for resolution, go up to up to 51,200 steps, which is ridiculous as far as accuracy. We do have a power step down for our logic, which is built in. So once he connects his power supply here, it will step down voltage to the breakout board, which is naturally its motherboard, and that will power its logic for its switch inputs. And again, very, very complete. Now, now that you can see the mock-up here, I want you guys to see where the inputs are on the drive versus where the GX16s will connect to these inputs. Do you see how short those are? Because I'm sure you guys can see this is literally a couple inches. And that means we've mitigated EMI just by the fact they're virtually direct connect. So again, very, very simple layout. Of course, we got our fan leads here that are long enough so he can naturally plug in, plug them into the power supply. And he is once again all set. And this is exactly the way the system will ship naturally with the cover on and you're good to go. So this mock-up in comparison to a finished G540 system when you look at all the wiring done on my G540 system, okay, the wiring is going to essentially be the same here with the addition of a step down to power the UC400. 
If he decides he wants to wire in inputs, he can at any time because the master edition version of this enclosure comes with those ports already in. So at any point in time, you can upgrade your system, you can add uh, switches, remove switches, whatever you want to do. But the main thing is all of the work of building a four axis individual drive system has been eliminated. So when you want ultra simplicity, you want to hit the ground running as fast as possible with absolute precision, this is the system to go with. And again, I cannot emphasize enough, G540 only supports up to three and a half amp motors. This system will support up to nine amp motors. That is ridiculous if you're working with larger scale mills. So if you guys are converting bridge ports, if you're looking at Tormach systems, no problem. We can go NEMA 42 and you can get as much torque as required because that has been a request that I've had forever. You know, NEMA 34 is great, but I really want to use NEMA 42. These systems have that ability. So it's amazing when you think of an investment like this, especially for this particular client, his concern was upgrading. We started with a 540 and then he was like, can I use the motors I have to retrofit the chassis so I don't have to buy motors? But of course, you're always in a conundrum. Will my motors work with a 540 system or do I have to change my motors, which usually in turn means I have to change transmission couplers and we go down that rabbit hole of if there's gears, if there's belts, pulleys, and most of that stuff isn't manufactured anymore. Think in terms of not having to do that, pending the motors on an older chassis are still good. So you've saved all the money there, all the time, all the money and time on your pulley systems, any of the transmission components, and all you have to do is utilize the SMCD. So again, looking at how clean this is, you can see the layout and just how simple this is to wire. He's got his fuse, he's got his IEC, and that's his 110 coming in. And then of course his power, power switch, e-stop switch, and that is the base setup. That'll give him a general four axis system. If he's using soft limits, he doesn't even need to use any of the switch ports, okay? But if he decides he wants to uh, control his spindle through Mach 3 or whatever motion control software he's running, he can do that. He can cycle uh, relays to control either fore and aft direction of the spindle, or he can use them for other accessories. So when you think about what the capabilities are of this system, it's virtually endless for its end user. Okay, the MST-109 drive's already heat synced. That's all done. Very, very clean and simple setup. And that's exactly what I wanted. This way, you guys can focus on learning your software or expanding and getting that older system or new system up and running as easily as possible. Once again, we do have our port covers. There is for our VFD control. You can see that right there. And these are three pin. And that's for our standard inputs. Very, very easy setup. So now you guys have seen the direct comparison between the two. And when I get guys that say, you know, I don't want to spend a lot, but I don't want to spend a lot also on retrofitting an older machine, this is the unit to go with. If your system, however, has motors that are three and a half amp, then a G540 system would be the way to go. Unless you're planning on upgrading in the future to a larger system. Okay, if you're, when I say a larger system, a full scale mill, um, I have a lot of guys that have a bridge port that they want to convert and still, you know, maybe they bought one at an auction and it has its motors and gears already. But again, it's older and it must be using stepper motors. If it's using steppers, this is a system you want. So I'm telling you right now, and that's what we're going on with this particular client. He's got an older router with uh, motors, once again, that are no longer produced, but the motors are in excellent condition. He just did not want to go down the rabbit hole of, once again, replacing transmission components. This was his best bet. And it's funny because when we do a direct comparison, that's the first thing I ask now is, what do you got? Once I know what you guys have, and that's why I say consulting is everything. When guys complain about price on that, it tells me they're number one, not serious. And number two, they really don't want to save that much money because I have yet to consult with someone that I have not saved them at least the price of the consultation. I mean, there is nothing like getting the proper education to understand what you're investing in. The equipment will work best when you understand it best and understand exactly what you need. And the big thing is options to expand. So knowing that, 
it keeps you guys ground-based mentally so you know, okay, if I invest in this, it'll grow with me. And on top of that, I don't have to upgrade. So that's a big, big key to understanding both of these systems and a big key to scheduling consultation to make sure you understand exactly what you're working with. Now, another question that's been coming up routinely is SMCU integration in a plasma system. Will the SMCU work for a plasma? Yes, it will. Same idea, same principle. Only difference is your relay is already integrated. So we're cycling the torch on and off. And again, the secondary relay, you guys can figure out whatever you want to actually use that for, but you're basically set to go. I mean, this is a full ready to go system. If your table is large enough and you don't want to use a 540, yes, you can do that. The other thing to keep in mind is the 540 has no relays in its base format. So this system is just using the breakout board that the G540 has, which again is subject to four inputs and two outputs. Now, not such a big deal to some guys in terms of when they want to expand, they'll do the labor to expand. In this system, you've already got the two relays integrated into the motherboard. So expansion is not really required. You just hook everything up and you're done. So looking at the difference, then you weigh the price. And the other thing I want you guys to really pay close attention to is looking up online how much an integrated drive system is. And I'm not talking just the drives. Guys always compare prices on just the drives themselves. That is a single component. It doesn't include wiring, solder, accessories, and everything else that goes with it. A pre-machined enclosure. Do the math. Once you do the math and you figure it out and you take the time to do your due diligence, you figure out how much of a value this is. Okay. Right now, the enclosures are, most of them are being milled. I have a couple right now that are in progress. I have a couple clients that are interested. So again, if you want one, message me. I always get questions too. Can they be custom machined? Yes, but I need to know what you need. Okay. And the thing about custom is depending upon the work, that's going to cost more naturally. If there's more holes, more ports, whatever you need, we can do. Okay. Different size configurations. You can see the size here, and this is the standard size. Um, once again, I like this size because this allows for optimal placement of any accessories in the future. So these are things to keep in mind. Anything can be done with the enclosures. I can do anything you need, any kind of port, but I need to know what you require and that will dictate then the time frame and exactly what you're asking for as far as integration. But I think now you get a good image of exactly what we're talking about when you look at the two systems side by side and you see exactly where we are. I mean, just the cooling capacity of this is massive. I mean, we do have push-pull configuration with our cooling fans and that makes a tremendous difference. And of course, we need some more real estate so we have ambient air that's available that's fresh for our drives. So you can definitely see what we've got. But hopefully, like I said, this, this doesn't bring up as many questions in terms of you guys seeing it visually. Because a lot of times when I talk, I get told, you know, it's better if you show me because then I can understand. And now you can see exactly what I mean. This is a very straightforward platform. So again, guys, um, I hope you guys all had a great Christmas. I'm wishing you all a blessed new year and very prosperous. If you do have any questions, of course, or you need a consultation, you can message me. All of my information is in the video description. Thank you again. Take care.